Hello and welcome to the script case video. My name is Jamie Oates and I will be your host today. Today's main topic is of course script case and sending messages and files with WhatsApp. Now this is no full integration with script case, but an example of how you can apply or use APIs that are available online within your own projects and combine them with ease within the script case. The WhatsApp API is provided by chat dash api.com. They were kind enough to provide me with an, an extended account for the purpose of this video, as well as the webinar, which will be available soon on our YouTube channel. So thank you very much for that. Okay, so let's make a start and check out the API that we will be using today, which is the WhatsApp API by chat dash api.com. The WhatsApp API is provided by chat dash api.com. Now, they were so kind to provide me with an extended account for the purpose of this video, as well as the upcoming webinar, and which is all available soon on, you, on the YouTube channel. So thank you very much for that, guys. And I must say also the platform has also been very easy to use, has been very intuitive, and works pretty much straight out of the box, which is really great. Okay, so let's make a start and check out the API that we will be using today, which is the WhatsApp API by chat-api.com. Viewing the website, you can create a demo or a free trial account and test the service out yourself. Once you have created your account and have logged in, you will be able to create your first API, also run some tests. Now here you have some examples of how to send a message, how to read a message, and also how to set a webhook, which you can then all apply within your own applications. So using script case, we use PHP, and we have here straight away a PHP example of how we would use this. So basically I've copied this code already and made some modifications. Uh, as in I've included my own API key, the URL, message and so on. And we will be working with that and sending some messages with files using this API key within this project. Okay, so once you have logged in and created your account, you will have your WhatsApp account ready and you have the option to scan. If I create here a new instance, we can then see here what happens when we have a new account. So with the new account, you will have to first of all scan your WhatsApp phone or application. So on your, on your mobile phone, you have WhatsApp, and there you have the option to scan the barcode or use an online service. So once an account has been created, you will have your authorization status, you will have a WhatsApp ID, you will have an API URL and also a token. Now these two are the most important aspects of this project because we will be needing them to link our project with the WhatsApp or chat API and send messages within WhatsApp. Okay, so if I return back to my other one because this is already linked and here for instance, you can see that it is already authenticated and any messages now sent within the account will then be sent via my WhatsApp account. Okay, so here within the chat API interface, I can view the message history, uh, message queues, uh, a screenshot of the instance. I can disconnect the chat API from my phone. I can also reboot the instance and I can clear the instance, okay? Which will then remove your WhatsApp application from the API, meaning you have to scan it again. Okay, so within the left-hand side here, we can also see that we have various options for the development. We have here a testing area. So viewing this, we can actually post uh, test examples and see what the request would look like, as well as for test, test requests, webhook simulations, and also testing. There's also a great deal of API documentation here. So anything you get stuck on, or if you want to advance your project using the API further, then you should be able to do that quite easily using some of the data that, and information that is available here. Okay, so I will return back here to my test account and uh, we won't be coming back here again because I already have these details set within my application and code. And just to view here also again the documentation. So you have here the instance information. So we will be using some of these within the project and code that we have. For instance, we use the send message briefly, and then we will be using the send file. Okay, so within our project, this is pretty much what we will be building today. So we have our script case project. 
and we have some basic customizations. We have a basically a WhatsApp button within a client list and we can click that. We can then select a file and then send a message within WhatsApp. So at the moment it's, it's saying uh, there is an invalid variable but the message is being sent at the moment so that it's not really a problem. It's um, somewhere along the line, it's getting lost, but it's okay because we're actually completing the process. Okay, so if I cancel that, I could actually see within my WhatsApp that the message has been sent and it will more than likely be have been sent to myself because I'm, at the moment I'm sending all messages to my own phone number and doing it that way and seeing an image basically each time. So it's a short piece of text and an image. So if I view here in the file archive, I then can also from here send a file, send this specific file from WhatsApp. And we also have the option to send multiple files, which I haven't linked in here yet, but we will do that then within the project that we will be creating so that it is a little more complete today. So we see within the project, we're also using some font or some icons. So I have here also the pages open already, where I can then just copy the icon that we want to apply within the project and have that then to be used within our application. Okay, so then within script case, if I then start off and I will start first of all by creating a new project. Okay, and I will start by creating a blank project also. So I can add an icon to the project. So I have here already um, a WhatsApp icon you see where I put it to, anywhere here, so I can do that, here it is, so I can just select this, view it also, I'm just going to check the checkbox here, and then add select up in the left hand corner. Now once I've done that, I can add a name then for the project, so I'll call it WhatsApp, and add a description. So sending WhatsApp files, I guess WhatsApp is written together. And then I can go next. Okay, so now I can select the database that I'm gonna use for this project. Now the database I have is very basic, as we will see in a moment. So I'm just gonna scroll down here. And here I have a WhatsApp table and database all prepared. I can then test the connection and go next. Okay, so my character set I will have as Unicode UTF because it's supported by the WhatsApp application and again click next so here i will then select my theme so here i will use the midnight as my default theme and remove the sweet blue as it's then not needed within my project and will decrease the size of my project okay so if i now go create the initial project creation is now completed and we can start by creating some applications Okay, so before I start with some applications, I'm first of all going to come up here to Project, and then I'm going to go ahead and access here Default Values. Okay, I'm going to scroll in a little bit so we can see a little better. Now here within the Default Values, I can now configure various aspects of my application. So here I can specify a logo that will be used throughout my project. So here I will select an image, for instance, and again, the WhatsApp image, I had selected for the project. Now if I add that here, this logo will be applied throughout my project. I can specify here how many records will be displayed, so common factors, and basically make some various updates also to the grid application, the form application, control, search, and so on. And this will save me making those changes to the applications as I create them within the project. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go update and the various aspects I have now configured within the default values will be applied to any new applications I create. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is have a quick look at the database. So if I come here to database and then database builder, I can then access the database that we are using for this project. Now here you can see I'm using two tables. Now we have a clients table which is storing a basic name, address, telephone number, 
and email, okay, as well as the ID or count of each client. We then also have an archives table, which is where we will be storing files, which will be sent to our client list. Okay, so if I now come back to home, we can start by creating our applications. But again, I'm gonna skip ahead, not create each application one by one, but I'm actually gonna come up here to tools and I'm going to select, sorry, application, and then I'm going to select batch applications. Okay, so here I will now select archives and clients and this will now create a form and a grid of both my archives table and my clients table. Now these will both be automatically linked. So the grid will automatically be linked with the form application, creating the link between the two, allowing for insert and edit right away. So this will create us four applications. So if I go now go next, I can now change the name of these applications, form archives, grid archives, form clients and grid clients. I can also add a description here. I add new files, form, here, list of files, for instance, so that I can identify my applications. Add new clients, and then the client list with WhatsApp. I can then on the right hand side, it will also specify the type of form that I want to create. So if it is a single row, multiple row, an editable grid or an editable grid view. So I will leave them both a single row and select here to generate the source and also to edit so that the application is open and that I can edit them right away. So I now go ahead and click finish the four applications will now be generated and opened within our main view. Okay, so now that we have our four applications generated and the links are already applied, let's have a quick look at them. So if I go ahead here and run the grid clients, first of all, we can see the default layout and everything applied to the grid application. So we can see, first of all, here with, that we have the automatic link of the form with the add new button. So clicking that, that button will then take us to the form application and clicking cancel will return us back to the grid. Now, if I then return back to script case and run, run the archives grid, we have then the same thing going on. So we have here a list of archives where we have no archives stored yet and the option to add new ones. So here, for instance, I can add an archive name, file, say, update version one and here then I add a URL www.google.com forward slash image forward slash image dot jpeg or for instance if I take from Google if I take here the header image so I copy the link and then I will use that within here the application Okay, like so. And here I will type a short message. This is a message. I can add some notes and I can also include a date. Now if I click add, the new archive will be added or the new file will be added and will be now displayed within the grid application. Okay, so the grid archives as well as the form archives are really just there so that we can add more messages 
into our WhatsApp list. So we have one there. We won't be needing any more. So I will leave this one as it is and close both the archives grid as well as the form archives. And we have there a little bug happening. So okay, let me close everything. And I will again open up clients and the form clients. And these will be our main applications within this. We will also add the button to the um, form archives, but we will do that shortly. So here we have our grid archives. And basically here we have the option to add more fields to this grid. So that's one of the first things we want to do is add a new field here, which will display our WhatsApp button. So I'll type WhatsApp as the name. I will create that. And now I have a field as WhatsApp. Here the data type, I will select say an image. Or HTML image, correct myself. And now here we will select an image that we have within our library. And again here if I select general images, I should have another WhatsApp image. Okay, so let me select that again. Add selected. And now I will select a width and a height of a 45. And let's go ahead and run the grid application again. And now within the grid application, we'll have the clients list with a WhatsApp button or an image basically at the moment, which we will turn into a button, which will then link to our WhatsApp application. Okay, so now that our grid is basically ready, we can do some more cleanups to that, add uh, the font or some icons to the header and so forth. But the first thing we wanna do is really start and work on our application. So if I start by creating a new application, And now here I will create a blank application. I'll call it blank and orange code and then create. Okay, and now I will paste in here the original code plus my modifications, which is here the adjustment to the URL as well as the token in use. And I will have also applied my own fun, phone number in here so that I can see the messages that are being sent. And here we have below here, we have here the message which is being created. Okay, so we have here the original message. So we have a chat ID and the body which we are sending. So we send here message, hello and welcome to the script case training. I hope you enjoy it. And below that, we then construct the message as well as the options and token. And then below that, we re request our response and we then display that here at the bottom. So that's what basically what's happening here within this original script. And what we want to do then is take this, make some adjustments to it and reuse this within our project. So if I save this and if I go run, This will now open the blank application. And as you see, send a message. It says sent true, so it's a success. Message sent to, my phone number, and then the um, well, a message contents again with a queue number. Okay, so basically seeing that it was a, a success, and we can then apply that within our own application. Okay, so now if I go ahead and create a new application, and this time what I will do is I will create a control application, and here I will say control underscore WhatsApp file, and go create. Okay, so now within the control application, we can first of all access fields on the left hand side here, and we can then create our own fields. So if I go new field, and here I will select, say one field, we really just need one field to select the file that I want to send. 
which then automatically includes a message. So if I come here and select the type as a select, here I will type archive. Do I spell it correctly? Archive and create. Okay, so now within this application here, we'll have my select and we want to then add now a lookup. So I'll leave the lookup as automatic and I'll create the select to display the archive name, which is then pretty much automatic also. So let's go yes, choose the connection, and then I can go ahead and run the application. And we can see the control app then presenting us a single field which is then the only file which we have added. So now if we come back here into script case and for instance, run form archives and add a new. So if I say that update version two and again, I'll take the URL of the Google image and place that here. This update. I can add some notes. I click add. And now back in the script case, I can then go ahead and run here the control WhatsApp file again. And we can now then see that we have then two options this time for selection which is an update version one and update version two. Okay, so we want to make some adjustments to this form because the control form really is quite basic. So let's first of all do that. So if I come here to settings and here in the settings, I'm gonna give this a width for 450. Uh, let's have a quick run of that and see what that looks like. Okay, it's a little nicer. And then if I return here to the layout header and footer, here I will remove the date and we then want to insert a title. Now, what I've mentioned a few times within some of uh, my videos is actually using the application languages as in the data dictionary fully. So what I'm gonna do in this time around is I'm gonna use application language and I'm not gonna link it to the database like really you should. I can use it separately also, which is really great. And here I can apply some project messages. So here I will go lang and I'll say archive, archive send underscore title. Now this here will then become my language key. So if I now click update, that has now become a language key within the script case. So here I'll then apply a title in a moment. But first of all, I will return to my control application. And here I will add the curly brackets and add then the name that I have here. So I'll copy that, turn here, paste that in there. So now I have the title of the application as well as for inserting applied here. And we could of course create separate ones and have them also reconfigured here within the application language. So if I go ahead and save that, now if I go run, there will now be no title. Okay, so now back in script case here, the application language, here I will now add a title. So first of all, if I come into script case, because basically we're using really long names here we have here, a file icon, so if I use this, come back to script case, and I'm now going to add here the font awesome icon. I will adjust the code slightly so that it doesn't break anything. And then now I can add a really long title here. Please select your, no, please select the file you would like to send. Okay, so if I now update that, and now come here and run my control application again and run, we will now have a logo icon plus a really long title, which is not usually possible within some of these fields because they only support so many characters. So this is one way of getting around that. I've mentioned it previously, and that's what we're gonna do here so that we can add 
the font awesome icon as well as a nice long title within some of these applications. So okay, so we have the archive. Let me adjust that here within blocks. And then here I will hide the label. Select no because we don't need that to collapse. Run that again. And we will now only have the drop down menu there displayed like so. Okay, so we can of course make some further adjustments here to the field and increase the size of it, adjust it to the center and so forth. I think at the moment it's good. Let's just uh, make some changes to the toolbar buttons. So here in toolbar, I will adjust the OK to the right hand side, the exit over here to the left. And the OK button, we want to change the name of that and the exit also, let's call that cancel instead of exit. And then for the OK, we will go send file. Okay, so now if I go run, we now have our control application ready. Okay, now back in script case, we now need to provide some code. So if I come here to events and then on validate success, because really we don't, we can add some further validation in between if we really want to, but there's really no need for this example. Okay, so I'm gonna copy paste some code again. And now this time. Okay, so we have again, pretty much the same as we had previously. We had our WhatsApp API and token. We have our phone number. We have our message that we are sending. Now I have included here in, you know, it's coded out. So we have here the message with a file, which is basically what we want to do. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this and basically we're just gonna Cover these now and remove them here from the file send. And we have here then also the same for the message. Like so. And then here we can comment them out and we have our new code. Okay, so there is a slight difference now. So we can see here, first of all, that we have the message body and for the JSON encode, we have the chat ID and just the body. Now with the file, we have the chat ID, the body, the file name, and also a caption that we can apply to the file. Now, if we then access the app chat API and you can access here the API docs and scroll down, we can then see here the send file. And then we can also see how this is then encoded within the application and the options that we have. So we have here the option, a caption, file name, body, chat ID, and phone, which is then what we have applied here within this code. So the phone we apply differently within the script, which is then applied here within the options. Okay, so now we have a code. So if I could go ahead and delete this, I'm gonna leave it there now for your, um, for you so you can actually see it then also and have the both the examples available within the application okay so below then we um, combine our file and send the message as well as then the file to whatsapp we then again get a request and then we echo that request out okay so if i save that and then now if i go ahead and um, we want our grid application so i come here to home and our grid clients. Okay, so now the grid clients, we want to then link the field which we had created. So if I view here fields, we have created this field WhatsApp. And now we want to link this field with this control application. Okay, so now the first thing we want to do within the control application, we want to take this client ID. So if I come back here to the control WhatsApp file and on script in it, we could then specify the application we want to then use within this project. Okay, so instead of doing so, what we're going to do is we are going to connect and gather the data before this. So if we comment this down, and then basically if we then run some macros again and connect to our database. So, okay, now what we wanna do then here at the top is we are going to connect to our database. We're gonna get the client name and the phone number. So we have here 
first name, last name, client name, telephone. Now they're not exactly our field names, so we need to adjust those. So that's one of the fields I used during my example. So we have 0, 1, 2. And we have their first name, last name. So we access them our database, database builder. And let's check our fields. MySQL, clients. Now we have client underscore name, client underscore address, client underscore teller. Now that's really the only one teller. So come here back to clients. So control what's app file. And here we have, so client name, client address, we don't need, client telephone number, we don't need, client teller, there it was. Let me confirm that, T-E-L-E, -E. back here to database builder, T-E-L-E, -E. correct. Okay, so then here within our application, we now get then the name, so I adjust that here to first name, and we can then make adjustments down here in our code. So let's scroll down. We have here image I'm sending, and we then need to for name change these details here. Okay, so <clears throat> we have here our phone. We have here a body. So here we want to display the file U file. We have here file URL. So let's copy this one first. So here we want file URL. Ouch. Okay, so file URL. And need to remove here. And then we have also file name. So here, file name. Okay, and then we have also the caption. So the caption we have some, we wanna combine that slightly. So if I adjust that, hey, to hello, and <clears throat> like so, there we go, client name. First name, first name, and then we want dot. So, and then we want a the message, correct? Message, a yeah, message, MSG, okay. And now your file. And then we want to hear the file name. Okay. So we have hello, um, Mr. Smith, or whatever that name is. We have then the message that is then applied here. So let's check these as well. We have then database builder, archive, archives. We're gonna fill this slightly different. So archives, archive name. So I come here from archives, archive name. So correct, archive name, capital A, name URL, capital. Okay, message capital. So message, archive name. And this was just URL, where file ID, so come here, ID, okay, equals archive. Okay, so now this will search for, from archives, is that could spell correctly, not capital letters, no, okay. So no capital letters there. And for clients, let's double check that. Client name, client teller, from clients, from clients, where client underscore ID, client underscore ID equals client ID. Okay, so now we want to pass from our grid application here, the client ID, which is what we will be collecting from there. So if I now save this, 
we have here, first of all, the database connection, which then obtains, first of all, our first name, last name, which is incorrect. So that also needs to be adjusted. It's not needed. Last name so one. This is then telephone. And then first name, I'll change that to client name because it's client name. And then here, I would adjust that also to client name, message, file name. Okay, so now if I save this, and then return to my grid clients. Now here on application links, we can come here to create a new link. And we want to apply that here, a field link, and apply that here to the WhatsApp field. And again, go next. And now select the application control WhatsApp file. Go next. And now I have here the client ID, ID and I will be passing the client ID. So I leave that, I confirm. And then I can specify whether I want to open the same window or a modal. So I say modal window and just click save for now. Okay, so if I generate here the chat, the control WhatsApp file. I can then come back here to grid clients, run this one. And then we can wait for, wait for the grid to start. And here we can now click on the WhatsApp button, which then gives us an error. So pass error, syntax error, unexpected echo. Okay, so let's return back to that here to control WhatsApp file. <clears throat> and of course the easiest thing is if I copy and paste the code over with the updates. So if I come here and Let's actually double check here. So we have telephone here, phone. This gets replaced here, so we don't need this no more. So let's actually remove that. We actually want to use here now the telephone. Chat ID. Telephone. Okay, so telephone. Applied. We have the arrow. Quest. Okay, so we're missing here the bracket and closing our line. Okay, so now if I run that again, we can then see that D1, control app. Okay, so now form's corrected. And now run the good clients again. Run. And now the good application. We can then click on the WhatsApp button, select the file we want to send, click send file, sent false, wrong chat ID format. So now we have here an error message. So we need to adjust that within our code. So if I come back here to script case, we can then check these error messages that we receive here also within the chat API code. So if I come back here to script case, and then control what's app file on validate success again. Good, so I changed here to phone instead of telephone. And I'm just gonna go ahead and change this here to phone equals telephone. And then so we have zero, one. If I then run that again. Enter the client ID, click the control button, click the send button. We then have an error message again with the chat ID. Okay, so now what I've done is I've updated the phone numbers in the database, the phone number was not correct. And now that the phone numbers are, have been added, we are now receiving the sent true message sent, and the message will be received on WhatsApp. Okay, so back into script case, 
we have here then the blank original code we can close that the control app is also ready the language application let's go ahead and use that quick again so if i come back here into grid clients and here layout here header and footer i will remove the date and here i will apply my own language key so again in application language general folder here if i can i will define my own language key now so if i go lang underscore and if i call this one say client grid title i can then copy that click update messages it is then st saved and then i can add that then within the grid clients Save that. If I run that again, you'll see that it has no title because I haven't added anything into the application language yet. Okay, so going back to script case here in the application language, and then we can then come back here to font awesome icon and maybe click select one of these icons. So I come here and use this WhatsApp square. Come back to script case. And I will again add it here, adjust the code slightly so it doesn't break. And then again, I can apply a super long title. Okay, actually, I've got full address in there and update that and then here within grid clients I can run that and then I can have a nice long title here in the in the header of my application now I can add CSS code in there also so I can make lowercase small, small text and make adjustments and that's in that way if I wanted to it's just a case of applying that um, HTML code here within the field okay so now we have our grid clients I'm just going to go ahead and close the application language the database builder we won't need no more and also here the generate source codes so I'm going to close that also and I'm going to close the grid clients also. So now there's one more application I want to create, and that is basically list sending of files to multiple users. Okay, so what I'm going to then do, I will select here the grid clients, and I'm going to copy this, and I will give it a new name, grid clients multiple. Okay, and go okay. Okay, now if I open this grid application, and now I'm going to first of all remove the field that I had created previously, because we don't need it no more. So if I come here for the WhatsApp field, click delete, and the field will then be removed. The application links, we can see that the application link will also be automatically removed. So I can then save the application, or come up here to fields, and then buttons and apply a new button. Okay, then we select the type of button to be a run button. And this button will then present us a checkbox next to each listed item and allow us to select them. Okay, so now here, if I then go send WhatsApp, we have up there already WhatsApp file, and then click create. I can then start to create or configure my button and the first thing I do then is add a WhatsApp icon so if I select that here I change the style to OK so it's green and here adjust the text send WhatsApp file I can add a hint also but the most important part is down here at the bottom the PHP code and here we then basically want to use the same code as what we have here within the control WhatsApp file. So here we have this code here, but we do want to make some slight adjustments. So then back within the client grids, here we have our button. I need to then add my PHP code, so I add that in here. We then have the same code as we had previous with some slight differences which we want me to apply here. 
So I'll change here from a global variable to a field variable, client ID, because we will be using here the client ID available here within this grid application. And the archive is then selected um, previously. The file archive, we then need to change here to file ID and also make this a global variable instead because then instead of actually selecting, we would select a file first and then pass it on to the multiple users. Okay, so here with the file ID, we receive it and then we use the client ID. Now, if I scroll down here, you'll see that there's now some extra code that we've been add that has been added. And the first thing we're doing here is we are providing two new variables, success and ouch. Now with success, we are have defined the sent true statement, okay? And for ouch, sent false. Now both of these phrases are within the code. So if I come here, right, if you remember when we run the previous application, we had there the line and it says sent success and sent false or sent true. So we can search for these by using the stripos uh, PHP ver uh, operation here. And then we can actually search for this code and then depending if it is available, we then say it works or it hurts. And then if it works, then we say, uh, we present a sweet alert message sent success. And if it fails, then again, we just say, ouch, something went wrong. Okay, so a slightly different from what we had before where I actually just presented the error message or the message, the success message and echoed the request out. Okay, so now if I go ahead and run the grid application, I, I first need to specify form ID, so I just go one. And then I have my grid list of clients and I can select here the clients to which I want to send the message and then I can click here the send WhatsApp file. So if I click that, it will then go ahead and send the message to each of these three clients. And then we receive the message sent. Okay, so we then need to create an application so that this can receive an archive. So if I come back here to home and we have here the form archives. Now, if I then come here to buttons and we will apply a new button and here I will say link and again WhatsApp and create. Now here I can then link this button to the grid clients multiple uh, but first let's adjust the button here so let's add first of all the WhatsApp icon change here the default starting to says green and maybe adjust here the text, send WhatsApp file. Okay. And then if I click here, link, it will automatically save that. And now I can select here the grid clients multiple, which is here. And then click next. It will request the variable. Now in this form, we already have the ID for the field ID. And that is specifically the ID which we want to pass along to the next application, being the good clients multiple. So if I now click confirm, I can specify to open the same window or modal. I'll leave it in the same window because it's a big grid and save. I can then go ahead and run the form archives, which if you remember is just a straight form where we have each of our files listed. And now here I have the button send WhatsApp file. I can click that and it will bring me to the grid where I can select multiple clients and send then the file to multiple clients. Okay, so that's our fully functioning project so far. The only thing that we could do here really to clean things up and join things together and the fastest of them all is of course by creating the menu. So I'm just going to go ahead and go new application quickly. Then go to menu and go create.
And now here I can just quickly import the applications or add them manually. So I will click here the import. And then I have here the extra window where I can select all of them, which I won't need. So I'm going to deselect here the blank bar. I'll leave that there actually so you can see it. The control WhatsApp file. We can actually remove all of these from clients is available within the grid clients. We can view the list of archives and view then the form and the multiple, we then have that also from the form, so I go like so. I will then deselect these and remove then the item one I had previously added. List of files. Oh, no, so this is add. Add files. And here we can then go list of files, or files list, file list even, and then client list. I'll just quickly change here the theme to here the gleam dark blue. It's like one of the nicest menus. And run the menu application. And now I have then a basic menu where I can then add the files view the list of files that we have available as well as then the client list okay so thank you very much for watching this good case video i hope you have enjoyed and we will see you again next time